Hey guys, um, talk about INBS, recent reverse split pump name. Um, I just took one of my normal patterns and it didn't work, but we're talking about, um, you know, I think, you know, this is another one of those plays where um, the chart paint can really affect your risk management, I think that's really one of the, you know, I've, I've talked about this on videos before, like TPST and um, Nexi, and I've had a few videos where essentially, um, you know, one of the, in, in low float land, one of the most bullish factors is lower high paint right below high day, right? So high day midday was here, and we had all this lower highs, right? So you never know, you know, this is kind of like your classic aggressive push, right? Um, I didn't uh, hit this rotation because I was actually uh, trading M-I-N-M long. And I had two longs in it that both initially worked and then both came back down. I ended up small green on it from taking partials, but I missed this trade. But then um, people, uh, someone on my Discord pointed out very correctly... I believe it was Moose in my Discord, but very quickly that they were walking this down. You could see that in low floats, whenever you have very controlled lower highs like this, there's always a chance that they rotate it back up and, and attack the backside, right? There's always a chance that that was happening. This was a really, this book map was really interesting. Pretty much the whole play was extremely interesting. You could see a lot of the control, a lot of the games that that went on with this play. Um, I uh, did not short uh, any of this. I'll, I'll go over why I didn't short anything in the morning here. Um, and then uh, we'll go over this play, why I thought it was really good. You know, it's a lot of stuff, you know. We had these painted lower highs, very, very controlled lower highs from about 5 to 518. And I was at least looking for some type of rotation back above it. And in low floats, the more aggressive the rotation, the better. This was a perfect little signal, very similar to MINM yesterday, where they swipe support, they aggressively initiate it, right? And, um, it gave a really nice book map signal that I went in on, right? So, um, you know, I was risking like 540s, 550s. Uh, and then um, what's interesting is, you know, usually on this type of pattern, when you get an aggressive backside type of liquidity move and it starts to fade, usually this is a great candidate for an all-day fade. I mean, this is really, you know, it's, it's what we talked about. Big squeeze, you know, in this case, multiple short squeezes. One, two, you know, you got this, you go up, swipe backside, and then you go down, right? Kind of your classic one, two, three, four, you know, um, you know, swipe the backside liquidity before you pull it, right? So, uh, you know, I took that, and usually this is supposed to go down, but then it started doing this really thin soaky rotation and that's really not good if you get like an a plus long trap pattern it should be weak you know it this is a type of move that should lead to constant support cracks constant weak bounces um you know with a lot of follow through to the downside if you see if you start seeing a lack of selling at support um and you start seeing, you know, thin grindiness like this, it's usually not very good. But I'm like, all right, well, you know, I'll keep my risk up here where um, I originally had it because I'm like, okay, well, what's happening here, right? And what's happening here is a very nice kind of bid prop, right? And usually bid props right under high A are very weak, right? So we have kind of two bearish, potentially bearish patterns, right? This one, this little aggressive push, with the volume, right, to high day, and then the bid prop, right? So I'm like, all right, well, if this, you know, I might get squeezed, you know, here, and I'll just eat, I'll eat the loss, but if it doesn't hit my risk, it is bid propping, and it started to fade. I'm like, cool. Like, maybe they just wanted to, you know, kind of fake some people out and uh, and pull it, right? But then you always have to look. It's like, well, what's what's always the bullish thesis, right? And bullish thesis is you got a lot of lower high pain, right? 
Lower high pain is never great. Um, and then they started doing that thin, soaky flag again. And, and I always talk midday. Midday initiations take out. They can take hours, right? Like the the, the price action that happens midday is not the same as the price action that happens in the morning, right? So, which is why midday longs are really difficult, right? Um, but you know, after around right here, I told my Discord I was like, I'm expecting some type of initiation. The fact that this is bounce, this is bounced like four times off the one minute two hundred. I'm like, I'm expecting some type of initiation. And then what they did on the book, and we'll see, is they stacked three 40K size bids right here. And, they, and it, bids that weren't really there before. You know, there's like ones that were like deeper, but then they started moving them up and stacking three, four massive, massive bids. And then once it started initiating, I was like, if this starts to break, if this doesn't pull right away, because uh, it was stalling at 524, I'm like, if this doesn't, uh, pull right at 524, 525, and, and begins to push. I'm just gonna get out, and I got out in the in the mid to high 520s, um, and I managed. You know, and the reason I did that is because you could see that the reason these big, you know, 60, 70 cent green candles happen right here is because of how they painted the chart, right, and how shorts are positioning themselves. So, um, also 5.5. You know, half fake half dollar resistance was right here too. So you have a bunch of stuff, kind of, you know, a lot of it's a big liquidity zone. You know, these squeezes are hyper aggressive, and I've seen the chart paint enough to know where to put my stop loss, um, especially with a, with this book map signal. These we'll we'll go over these massive bids, but um, yeah, we'll go over uh, and, and then I just you know I since I know where people are positioned short and where their stop losses are, I can get in, you know, here's a squeeze, right? So you could see right here is when, is where they started stacking the bids. You could see that these are, um, you know, right here, this is 40K on the bid, 20K. And then this, once this 40K came in, I took a screenshot and another person in my room also pointed this out we took a screenshot I'm like I'm like oh they're really moving up the bids and I was like you know I thought they were going to initiate it over here like right here but then it was about 10 minutes later that this third bidder came in and then it was on this little it's you know they they initiated it with no bid follow-up but the chart is so painted that I'm like all right like if this starts to break through here right here this is where um, I put my stop market loss, right? Put it right here. Cause I'm like, like as soon as this starts pushing and you could see right, right here, this is 525. This is where I started getting executed on my stop loss. This is uh 14, 19, 20. And then this is 14, 19, 26. So this is six seconds right here from here to the squeeze six seconds later. So I get executed about three or four seconds later, it starts to squeeze straight up, right? So that's just understanding chart paint. You could see, you know, you could see earlier that the bids were actually pretty empty down here. There weren't a lot of bids, weren't a lot of bids, weren't a lot of bids. And then right when they're ready to initiate it and they built up enough short liquidity in the stock because that's why what's that's really happening midday you know they got to build liquid you know there's less liquidity midday so you know as opposed to market open you know look at market open right market open um you know i also and i was initially bearish this i really wanted um i was hope you know i saw all these bids here this is why i wasn't shorting up here because i'm like oh man look at all these bidders and they did the classic thing where they let the bidders get sold into and then they threw up big bids on the bottom and rotated it, right? Now, I didn't long this because it's really hard to predict. You know, this was kind of like down only into some bids, and then it rotated. And it's really hard to predict which of these bids are going to hold. So even though, like, the book looks really bullish, right? You got massive stacks of bids and an empty book to the upside. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't long it. But I didn't want to short it either, right? So I'm like, all right, um, you know, on this push, 
they did this really aggressive hide. They instantly squeezed hide a um, on this push. And the reason I kind of didn't want to short this hide a clear out here, even though it's hyper aggressive, I actually don't blame people for taking this hide a clear out. Because if you remember in my video uh, yesterday, I talked about how these clear outs often they fill a bunch of ask when no bid follow up and they pull it. Um, and I, a few people in my room took this at a really good average. It's like in the 490s up here. But um, I just didn't want to take it just because I was afraid of um, f fake $5 resistance. I thought, you know, the, this $5 ask is like the only thing holding this down. And there's a lot of empty space up here. And I was afraid, especially because this was o the only low float stock kind of running today. I was afraid that this would be really strong. And that a high day clear out would be a short trap here, right? So I was like, you know, I told my room, I was like, you know, I'm a little afraid of the $5, fake $5 resistance. And that's why when $5 got broken, look, the book is so empty. It just teleported 60 cents straight up. <laughs> 60 cents straight up. Um, and then here's, you know, this, in, in, this is actually not a bad short here. This is a classic low float type move where like, they like swipe support levels and then immediately initiate it. And what's nice about swiping support levels like this, and it's the same idea behind the, the short that I took later, is that it often clears out these bids. So like they clear out the bids and then they do this aggressive move that usually has no bid follow up, um, right the high a day that, you know, never breaks it and then they pull it, right? But I was too busy trading MINM to to, to, to uh, play this move and I'm like oh man and then what started happening was like we got these weak bounces and they started stacking tons of ass I and mean, you can actually see it right here there's like there's like 15k 6k 7k 6k 4k 13k 18k 16k there's all these ass that they're stacking I'm like man should I short into this it's like just short of these like because we, we've have seen before where they just stack like eight layers of ass that never get broken and the thing just rolls over and dies so when this rolled over like this i was like oh man like why didn't i like you could actually see how thick the book is up here i'm like why didn't i trade that i'm like i was like you know because a part of me you know a big part of me is like if i miss the good move which is like this move up here you know a lot of times i think a lot of this is chasing and or situations like this where it's like maybe that market maker is just holding the stock down. You know, I thought about shorting this move too. Like they swiped support and then they rigged it back up again with no bids into the ask. And I'm like, should I, sh like, I'll go, I'll go to the think or swim chart really fast. You know, what I was actually kind of hoping would happen was I was hoping this candle would break these lower highs. I was hoping all these asks would get filled up to 518, which is where this high was. And then I was hoping it would get into the 520s and then and then stall and then I would like almost insta short it, right? Especially if there's no bid follow up. I was like, you know, kind of rotation in the 520s, 530s, short it, you know, do this like kind of aggressive long trap and then pull, right? But to me, the scary thing is that this continues to be just more lower highs, right? More painted lower highs. And there's times where I'll miss, you know, where these this type of trade will fade um, and I'll miss it, right? I'll miss it. But they started the rotation. You can see the higher lows, right? Then right here, they did the support swipe into a big aggressive push. And if we go to the book there, we can see the same signal we saw in M I and M. So remember, we have that 518 lower high that I was kind of looking at um, and all the way up into the 520s, 530s. And we see them swipe support. Here's a support swipe, right? And look at this ask gets filled. This ask gets filled. This one, this one, this one. You had all these asks getting filled with no bid follow-up on a hyper-aggressive move towards high day. And I just thought that, oh, this is just like NINM. This is what I've been tracking. You know, they, they, they paint a backside level. You know, they bring it down. It comes back up. They aggressively move through it. Um, fill a bunch of ass with no bids and then they slam it back down. So I took a short, you know, here. And then, um, you know, it had this like weird bounce 
And with a follow-up bid, I actually thought I, was, I might get squeezed. I'm like, man, are they just going to squeeze it straight to 550? <laughs> uh, but luckily it worked, and I'm like, all right, well, that was a weird little bounce, but um, the trade's working, right? And then, like I said, I expected I expected this to just roll over, at least go to the 1 minute, you know, crack VWAP, get to the 1 minute 200, you know, maybe take a little bit of profit in the low fours, and then... Uh, you know, and then hold for the rest. But then they started soaking, right? And they started doing the bid prop. I'm like, all right, well, it looks really aggressive, but it is bid propping. I could see it kind of going either way. I'll keep my risk at the same level. And then the bid prop cracked. And then, yeah, and then this should have faded. And then once it went into thin midday soak mode, I'm like, this ain't, I was like, this is, Real, you know, I've seen this. Play. <laughs> I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen this movie before. You know, I mean, it's like this this thin zero volume midday consolidation is never good, um, especially after two, you know, relatively a plus, you know, short patterns at the top. You know, on a stock that has squeezed a few times already, um, and yeah, like I said, it just went sideways, no volume, and then. And then the the bidder, you know, there's a, there's some big bidders, but they're all down here, right? They're at like 4.3 and 4.5, and I'm like, all right, well, maybe it comes down to here and bounces off of them, and then maybe they get taken out. Like I don't know, but then they started moving this one up. I'm like, oh, they're moving them up. That's not great. And then they put another one, and this is why I said in my Discord, I'm like, they might initiate this. Um, you know, I said that at 205. I'm like, I think they're gonna initiate this sometime soon, through the lower highs. And then they came in with a third one. I'm like, oh, dude. And then they started initiating. I was like, I, I gotta be. I'm like, you gotta be careful here, man. It's um, the chart pain is 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 so strong. It's unsurprising why this went all the way to six eight six eighteen. That's insane, man. Um, and yeah, this is a good example of just, you know, understanding that multi-hour midday consolidation with how many lower highs. Like you could just count how many lower highs there are. Right? You know, the main ones are you know here's high day one two three you got three all and half dollar right so you have a bunch and then you have you know these lower ones down here but i would consider three super tight you know very close to high day lower highs and you know fake half dollar resistance very scary um and then yeah i just stopped myself out it went straight up and I thought to myself, man, what a long signal. I was like, what an insane long signal. These, this, especially when this last bidder came in, this ended up being, if anything, I should have like, as soon as this initiated, I should have just covered break even and then chased long. I actually thought, man, like, should I, should I have been doing that? Um, and then I just stopped trading it because I thought it would be strong. You know, I was, I was afraid of like hiding clear out short traps and, and, that, and then my daughter woke up, so I was like, I just want to pick her up, and I didn't even really look at this rest of the day, and I, so I, I haven't traded any of this stuff. But um, but yeah, I mean, let's look at the book. Actually, I haven't really looked at the book after this stuff. So they swiped six dollars on the fake, you know, long trap rotation. Um, unsurprising why this dipped like that, but man, they just did the same soaky, thin soaky stuff and then they started right before they squeezed six again they started you can see them throw up the bids throw up the bit you know they're knifing it right but they're knifing it into bit you know the, the reason they do these knives is because you know a lot of retail will see this push up the six and they'll try to buy the breakout here so they try to buy here they get shaken out you know, and then they do a few more shakeouts, like down here, and then, you know, this is how low floats trade. Even if they're super strong and go straight up, like, they still have to do these mini baits, right? These mini short baits slash, you know, long trap, sh you know, long shakeouts, and then they, and then they rip, right? Um, this one is actually a pretty good Heidi clear out short trap. So this is Heidi clear out, pull back into some bids. Those bids, you know, this this six fifteen level holds one, two, three, four times. Empty book to the upside. This is actually, but by the way, if you're going to be longing up here, you know, because this is like how many? It's like the fourth or fifth squeeze. Like, um, 
you get a lot of these plays or scalps. Um, you could actually scalp these moves. You know, you you long six thirties and you sell at high day. You know, you, they're like they're like five to ten percent scalps, but they're uh, if you have the right read and understand what the short trap is, they could actually be pretty good odds. Uh, but you never know when the liquidity is going going to run out. You never know when the bids are going to get sold into. And yeah, I mean, this thing is just kind of bouncing around right um so did not trade it maybe it fades straight down for me i doubt it you know when i see whenever i see like a rollover plus down only i'm just you know i'm just gonna assume that it's just gonna keep being manipulated i don't i don't really see any type of liquidity pattern up here so i mean who knows what's gonna happen in the after hours or by in the next you know 25 minutes but we'll see um but yeah, you know, lower high paint, man. You know, one of the big lessons I would say is like, when you get super aggressive, long trappy patterns and they don't have follow through, um, it's usually not a good sign. You know, here's your little aggressive push that stalled and here's your bid prop that stalled. And when they don't, and when they don't have follow through and you start getting these thin flags, these thin sideways flags like this, it's, um, you know, let me look up TPST. I'll show you TPST, for example, um, on the crazy day. 10-11. This is a good example where it was in, it was here. So, like, TPST, I shorted TPST here. You could see the aggressive push towards high day. They... Released a PR, it dumped, it reclaimed, stuffed again, and dumped. And I thought this was going to roll down. Here's your thin, grindy, you know, these, this, these, when these type of aggressive, these type of aggressive moves, if they pull back, they should fade, right? On, on a stock that's very extended. Um, especially because these are right below high a day. But when they start, it's a, but it's the same idea, right? You got a lower high here, you got two or lower highs here. You get this lower high paint, it soaks, gets kind of thin, starts getting really grindy, starts to flag. These are never good. <laughs> this is like, I remember being short this and seeing this happen. I'm like, oh man, this this trades, like this this should just roll over. Instead, it's it's propping up and getting real thin and grindy. You know, it's um, and then you know the rest is a uh, <laughs> rest is history on this name. So, um, anyways, guys, that's uh. So my video for today uh pretty much made nothing um didn't really lose a whole lot though so uh yeah um inbs interesting play you guys have a good weekend and information down below about the discord and um see you monday